Hey, welcome back. <laughs> Give the computer some thorium and a Fonzie jukebox slap, and we're back in business, baby. Yes. That's right, Jay Acker. We are back in business. Uh, sometimes you got to just reboot the everything. Um... Just to get it to work again. And yeah, I apologize for all of that. I don't know. You know, this is ongoing, um, very frustrating technical issues that um, just seem to be chronic. And it's very frustrating. I, I, you know, I'd spend a lot of my time trying to troubleshoot these issues and I only have a limited amount of time to actually, I have other things in my life to deal with other than this channel. But anyways, any, we're all back. TCR. Cheers. But uh, again, shout out to uh, Carl Pauls once again for joining me on, on that live stream for a discussion. I know got really choppy, but we're gonna we're gonna get into just some climate stuff um, just for a little short bit, and then we will all be free to go enjoy our afternoons. Um, good tweet here from someone named Nicole in New York City. She says, "Who looks at this and is like, yeah, more of this." Yeah, mmm, delicious traffic. Delicious urban congestion. We love it. Exactly, boiled rope lampposts, right. Um, Poppy Davis, ongoing fuckery by the powers that be. You know, sometimes I think that myself when I'm feeling extra paranoid. <laughs> I'm like, is somebody making this happen? Whatever. Uh, anyways, dealing with, uh, Hurricane Isaiah's, here's a tweet from Jeff Berardelli. Water temperatures partly spiked by climate change is aiding and abetting the system and the record pace of the hurricane season overall. I'm going to play this little clip for you. Hopefully you can hear it. Morning, Jeff. Good morning. How soon might Isaiah's make landfall? It looks like it's probably going to happen tonight and tomorrow, and so you have just the next few hours to prepare if you're along Florida's east coast. Let's show you the current status on the storm right now, located across the central Bahamas. It has winds of 85 miles an hour, and it's moving to the northwest, so it's right around Nassau. This is what has changed overnight since you went to bed. The track has shifted ever so slightly east, away from the coast. That's good news, but any change at all, there's no wiggle room, would bring the strongest winds tonight and tomorrow right along the major I-95 cities. Then possibly a second landfall on Tuesday along the Carolina coast, and maybe a third landfall in New England as we head into Wednesday as a weaker storm. This is the wind field, and you'll notice the strongest winds move in late tonight through tomorrow morning, strongest winds in Palm Beach County, then along the Treasure Coast and towards the Space Coast as we head towards tomorrow afternoon. Watch out for hurricane force wind gusts, then eventually into the Carolinas. Let me leave you with this right here. Water temperatures are blazing hot across all of the Atlantic Basin. Temperatures actually in record territory. Part of this is due to human-caused climate change. We have warm water temperatures by a couple of degrees. That has two effects. First of all, it makes these storms more intense and very well could keep the intensity high on this particular system. And also, it's accelerated the pace of our season to record territory. We're exceeding records already. This is likely to be probably the second most active hurricane season on record when it's all said and done. Okay. CBS. <laughs> um, giving up the goods on climate change, saying, hey, we have extremely warm water. And this is, this is due to human-caused climate change. So um, kudos to CBS for speaking truth uh, to the people, um, at least letting people know what, what's, what the deal is, what's happening. Uh, methane on crack, Guyo Smith. Oh, I haven't seen Sam Carina's latest post. Poth. Um, 
I will check that out. Maybe I'll bring that back tomorrow. But yeah, there's a there's an amazing amount of methane, especially in the Arctic, especially in the Eastern Arctic. I wonder why. I wonder. I wonder why. <laughs> Remember a long time ago when Natalia Shakova was like, we could see this huge release from the Eastern Arctic ice shelf. Um. Right. Remember when she said that? This is a long time ago. She's she's like, get ready for it. Um, was that ten years ago? I don't know. It was a long time ago. <sighs> Already, my my um, already everything is starting to buffer. So I'm gonna try and get through this really quickly, guys. Okay, okay. Sorry about it. Um, we'll just, we'll just muddle along and try to manage what is going on here. Uh, this is out of the Guardian from two days ago. Everything is burning. Argentina's Delta fires rage out of control. Cattle ranching and drought have to, oh, they did it to me again. It did it to me again. I should always see this coming. Um, anyways, here it is. Cattle ranching and drought have turned the Piranha River grasslands to tinder, threatening disaster for the area's wildlife. Um, dang it. Guardian is becoming super annoying. A ra uh, raging fire described as completely out of control is threatening one of South America's major wetland ecosystems. The fire has been burning for months now. Isn't it wintertime in Argentina? And is visible from the balconies of luxury apartments along the shoreline of the Parana River in Argentina's central city of Rosario. Or Parana River. In normal, normal times, Rosario's riverfront homes enjoy a spectacular view of the seemingly never-ending green grasslands on the opposite bank. of The Piranha a waterway stretching over a mile across, its pass, across as it passes through the city. It stretches a mile across. In recent months, however, dwellers in the luxury condos have been congregating on their balconies as the wall of red flames from thousands of fires raging through the Piranha Delta grasslands rises high into the sky. Everything is burning. It's completely out of control. Lino Mingo, a spokesman, spokesperson for Greenpeace Argentina, told The Guardian, once a fire reaches that scale, it becomes virtually impossible to stop. Piranha is South America's second largest river after the Amazon and the eighth longest river in the world. Its floodplain, known as Rosarinos, as La, oh, known by Rosarinos as La Isla, is not actually an island, but a vast delta covering some 15,000 square kilometers through which the per, uh, Piranha drains toward the Atlantic Ocean 300 kilometers away. Um, wild. First, I have heard of this at all this year. Um, and this is a wildfire happening in the middle of winter in the Southern Hemisphere. So there you go. Very sad and unfortunate. We're going to keep on going here. We're going to keep on going. Guy o Smith says, glad I'm not in Phoenix. Yes, I'm sure it's very hot there. It's... It is hot here right now. I'm looking at my outdoor thermometer. It says 100, almost 100 degrees, 99 degrees. Uh, let's move on. Europe. Europe roasts in extreme heat. Rivers run dry and wildfires destroy homes in France, Germany, Suffers a drought and Italy issues maximum red weather warning 
As continue, uh, continent bakes in 101 Fahrenheit heat wave, Paris is set to re reach 104 temperatures after several French cities hit record highs on Thursday. Spain is also roasting in the heat caused by hot air coming in from Africa, just as mask rules are tightened. Germany has also imposed heat warnings, while 14 cities are at the highest alert level in Italy tomorrow. That would be Friday or yesterday. Um... Europe is facing a summer heat wave with riverbeds drying up in France. Uh-oh. And 14 cities on red alert in Italy, while Germany suffers a month-long drought. A dramatic wildfire in the French Atlantic coast. Resort of Anglet, or Anglais, however you want to say it, destroyed nearly a dozen homes and forced around 100 people to evacuate before it was finally brought under control today, while rivers ran dry in eastern France. Spain is also roasting in the heat wave caused by hot air coming in from Africa, just as Madrid tightens its rules on mask wearing to combat a second wave of coronavirus cases. Large swaths of Germany are also under, heat, uh, under a heat warning this weekend. After the country saw just 65% of its expect expected rainfall over the month of July. Uh, yeah. I cannot see this. There's way too much going on on this website. Way too much. Here we go. House is next to a dried up riverbed. The dried up Dubes River in Maison du Bois Livement in eastern France today, as numerous French cities saw record temperatures during a summer heat wave. Um. Yeah, so that is happening. Extremely hot weather in Europe, all over Europe. Wildfires. Drought. Rivers running dry. Um, that's what's happening, kids. That is what's happening. Yes, Scott Andrews, the M internet gremlins are messing with me today. I don't know. I don't know what it is, y'all. But anyways, we're just we're just getting through a little bit of climate change news today before I leave y'all. Uh, last thing I wanted to cover today, if we can get through it. This is from, oh, Jesus Christ, no. No. From the New York Post, from July 29th, humanity likely faces rapid catastrophic collapse, study warns. It's not the news you want to hear during a glo global health crisis. In a new theoretical study appearing in Nature, scientific reports, a pair of statistical researchers have warned that rampant human consumption has sent us on a tailspin towards a rapid catastrophic collapse, which could happen in the next two to four decades. Forest density on the current or the current lack thereof is considered the cataclysmic canary in the coal mine. According to the report, by comparing the rate of deforestation against humanity's rate of consumption, study authors Mauro Bologna and Gerardo Aquino have Determined there's a 90% chance our species will collapse within decades, calling this estimate an optimistic measure. Wow. Optimist optimistic view, 90% chance of collapse. Based on the current resource consum consumption rates and best estimate of technological rate growth, our study shows that we have very low probability, less than 10% in, in the most optimistic estimate. To survive without facing a catastrophic collapse, they wrote, while much attention has been paid to the ways in which greenhouse gases have contributed to the demise of our species, Aquino focused mathematical models on the, the undeniable fact of human-driven deforestation. Before the development of human civilizations, our planet was covered by 60 million square kilometers of forest, according to the article. As a result of deforestation, Less than 40 million square kilometers currently remain. The researchers set out to evaluate the probability of avoiding 
The self-destruction of our civilization based on numerical simulations, charts and graphs that don't look like much, much to us as laymen, but f for two theoretical phys physicists, they amount to disaster. They also call into play Fermi's, Fermi's paradox, which refers to the theor theoretical discussion of extraterrestrial life from Enrico Fermi, an Italian physicist who once asked, where is everybody? <laughs> One aspect of the discourse is the idea that self-destruction caused by unsustainable environmental exploitation may be an inevitability of intelligent life, and thus a potential reason why we have not yet had the opportunity to meet our galactic neighbors. To avoid such an outcome, it would require an alien society pr to prioritize culture over economy, which Aquino and Bologna assumed to be unlikely based on the human experience, even if intelligent life forms were very common. Only very few civilizations would be able to reach a sufficient technological level so as to spread in their own solar system before collapsing due to resource consumption. Hey guys, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel. Hit the links below, uh, PayPal, Patreon, Square. Uh, also, if you'd like to watch the live streams. You can watch the live streams on my Patreon channel. You can subscribe for as little as a dollar. Um, so hopefully I will see you over there and thanks so much.